Monday morning, Melrose Mountain, and uh, we woke up to about 68 degrees. Uh, they say we'll be in the mid-70s today before the day is out. Maybe some thunderstorms this afternoon, but it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, looking outside, the birds are at the bird feeder, and the lake is uh, just as calm as could be. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty day. We're in First John, and uh, we've been looking at uh, all of the profound statements made in First John. And uh, we know that uh, he has told us a couple of times that if we say we're in him or that we walk in the darkness uh, instead of the light, uh, we, we uh, say that uh, we don't love our brothers, then we're lying about uh, our relationship with him. And if we really have a relationship with him, uh, we're going to walk in the light and we're going to decide that we want to be better and more like him. And uh, that comes to the word practice. Uh, when I was a very young boy, uh, my father decided that uh, we ought to learn how to play the piano. But you know, you can't ever learn how to play the piano if you don't practice. Uh, practice is a word that means a continual action. Uh, it doesn't mean you practice once right after the music uh, teacher has left or just before she comes the next time. Uh, practice means just that. It means your daily routine. And here we're called to practice righteousness to prove that we're born of him. And we should want to. We should have a new want to to be more like him. As we enter chapter 3, he tells us about the great love that he has for his children. Now, all of us that have parented or grandparented know about great love. We know how much we love our children. We know how much love we love our grandchildren. And uh, God knows that we can relate to the fact uh, that he loves us, but he loves us not as a distant relative or not as a general I love mankind kind of a statement. He says, I love you as my children. And it tells us the encouraging word is that as imperfect as we are here on this earth, uh, he tells us that when he comes again, when he appears again, We'll be like him. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if uh, we were like him now? Uh, we would not have any trouble getting along with one another. But we're not like him right now. Uh, we're being conformed to his image, but we're not there yet. And uh, we probably will never be there until we see him again uh, when uh, we enter into the pearly gates. And uh, he uh, helps us to become like him. Uh, and if and if he purifies himself, he says, if you, if you purify yourself, uh, you're doing the right thing and you don't practice sin. He says that both in verse 7 and 8. Uh, practicing, again, remember, means a lifestyle of sin, a, a, a routine of sin. It doesn't mean the occasional times uh, when inadvertently you sin. He's talking about someone who continues to practice sin. It was certainly not born of God. No one born of God practices sin. You see, God's Holy Spirit works within us to convict us of that sin and make us miserable when we're in sin. Uh, and uh, we don't, we don't uh, have that want to practice sin, even though we are drifting away by lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Uh, we constantly come back to him because we, we really don't want to live that way. Not if we're really born of God. In verse 10, he says that we're children of God, and that should be obvious to all of those around us, that we belong to him, that we're his children. And as a result of all of that, verse 11, that we should love one another. Uh, that is really hard to do sometimes because some people aren't real lovable but God wants us to love one another and uh, that doesn't mean the person has to be our best friend we don't have to approve of everything they do we don't have to agree on everything together but we love them uh, recently I received a phone call about someone and uh, I said not my favorite person but uh, we really need to pray for them we need to really love them and we need to really want the best for them. Uh, that's, that's a godly thing. That's not something that comes out of the flesh. The flesh would just, you know, be happy with somebody's misfortune. 
but a godly love is a love that says, even though this person is not my favorite person, I love them and I want the best for them. I, I don't want them to have pain and suffering. It's a real test of our faith uh, to truly love people. And I think that all of us can relate to that. So I hope that your thought for the day is uh, to try to bury your feelings uh, that uh, times when you've been hurt, times when you've been abused, uh, times when uh, perhaps uh, someone even spitefully did something to you. Hope you can bury that feeling and uh, love them in Christ. Again, doesn't make, have to make them your favorite person. Doesn't mean you have to want to be with them all the time. Uh, but you need to love them and you need to continue to pray for them that God would conform them to his image. And know this, if they're truly saved, the scripture here tells us very clearly, one day as his children will be like him. <laughs> Won't that be wonderful when we're all like him? That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.